Another way to create a report is using the report wizard. The wizard is going to ask us a bunch of questions, and based upon our answers, it's going to create a fancy report. So to do that, come up here and click on the Create tab, go to the Reports group, and there's the wizard. Click on it. It's a step-by-step -step process. It's going to be asking us questions, and it says, which fields do you want on your report? So you can have all these, well, different tables and queries. As you can see down below, it includes tables and queries. All those that are listed over here will be found when you click on the drop-down arrow here. So we can go ahead and choose, like, let's do Departments, and double-click to add the department name that we want to add to our report. And we'll leave that there and add, click on the drop-down arrow, additional fields from the computer's table. And so with it still there, from the department's table, the department's name, we can add asset tag, manufacturer ID, double-click date received, and double-click purchase price. Now what I want to be able to do is to add all the computers that have been assigned to an employee and get the running total for that entire department to see which department we're spending the most computers on. So I've got my department name, and then later on in the wizard, I can choose to group it for all the computers that are in the IT department. It'll group them there for the HR department, group them there, and so on. But keep in mind that when you're choosing different tables, just make sure that they're related either directly or indirectly. And so are my computers related to the department table? Well, to find out, let me click Cancel. Come up here, click on the Database Tools tab, go to the Relationships group, and let's check out our relationships to find out if they're related either directly, the computers table, to the department table, or indirectly. Click on Relationships. There's the computers table. Where's my departments? Right there. So they're related, but through the employees. Doesn't matter as long as they're related directly or indirectly, I'll be able to have them match up, even though I won't include any of the employees. Just the computers, well, barcode, manufacturer ID, date received, purchase price, and which departments that those computers have been assigned to. But they're assigned by employee, but since each employee belongs to a department, there's the codependent table that links these two up that allows me to go ahead and have them grouped as we'll do in the wizard by department these computers. So let's close out, go back to our create tab, go to the reports group, do the wizard thing, and let's go through this. Now I don't want to add computers first because I want to add the department name first. Double click up at the top for my selected field, the first field, and then I'll go ahead and go to the computers and double click on my four fields here and then click next. So how do you want to view your data? What does that mean? Well, when it has departments selected, it wants to group everything by department. So in the hierarchical structure, it's outdented and up at the top, and then everything falls underneath it. So for these computers that are in the IT department, that'll be grouped together. Then when it goes to the next department, any computers in the HR, it'll group those together and so on. As opposed to viewing our data by the computers and not by departments, it puts them all together. There's no grouping. So the department name is right next to the asset tag to the manufacturer, and that's not doing it for me. So let's go ahead and go back to Departments, and then click Next. Now when I click Next, if it didn't group, or I want to add additional grouping levels, you can do it right here. So to add another grouping level, just go ahead and select a field that you want to add, and you can double-click on it, and it adds it over to the right, or double-click on it to remove it. Or with it selected, you can, of course, use the arrow to move it over or the arrow to move it back. Let's go ahead and move it over because, whew, I'm getting dizzy. And see if this makes sense. So we have a group by department, like in the IT department. It's going to have a bunch of computers. I think there's like three in there, four or five. Well, actually, the IT department has maybe a lot more, six or seven. Then after it pulls all the computers in that department together, those computers, if they're from the same manufacturer, well, then it doesn't really need to group them. But if they're from two or more different manufacturers, like two of them are from Global, two of them are from SpyTech, then it groups the SpyTechs together, and it groups the Globals together, or their IDs together. So we can have the manufacturer IDs grouped after it does it first by department. I'm not going to do that. I'll double-click and let it go and just keep it simple here. And then click Next. And then it says you can sort your records after it groups them, the records within that group, either ascending or click on it to go descending. I'm going to go ascending and pick the field that I want them to be sorted by. How about the barcode, the asset tag? Select that. That works for me. And then remember, I want to be able to get a total summary or a grand total 
for the purchase price of the computers for, well, all the departments, but also for each department. So let's go ahead and click on Summary Options, and there we go. It only shows one field because that's the only field that is a number field that allows me to go ahead and sum up or average or find the lowest number or the maximum number within that purchase price field. But I want to get the sum total. And then over to the right, the default is to show the detail and the summary. What that means is that it'll show, in this case, all the computers, the details, and not just the sum total. But if I chose the summary only, I just get the summary of the departments, and it will not show the computers that are assigned to that department. So I want to see the computers as well as the summary for the department of those computers, and click okie dokie. That's good. Let's go ahead and click Next. And then how do you want to see the layout of your report? Do you want it stepped? So the dark orange fields are your labels, and then the data is the light orange fields down below. And so you can see it stepped in a hierarchical structure. So there's the department. And then if I had it grouped by manufacturer ID, it would be stepped down. And then over to the right, and then any other groupings in that structure. Or you can do it by block. So it goes from left to right. Or you can do it by outline. Kind of stepped. As it goes down and over, and there's the labels. But I'll keep it stepped. And click Next. And then what title do you want for your report? Well, it's not going to be a table, TBL, so let me go ahead and just delete that and call it RPT because it's a report, and it's going to be purchase department in any case. Let's go ahead and click finish. Well, you can preview the report or just go right to the design view if you want to make any additional changes before you preview it. Let's go ahead and preview it, click finish, and there it is, the long name, so it's been saved. And there's the title of the report, and let's see if it checks out. We've got our department, Human Resources, and a group of computers, well, those that are assigned to the employees who are in the Human Resource Department right here, a total of three, and it's sorted by asset tag, so let's see if that checks out. Ascendingly, that is. So from the smallest number up to the largest, oh, that's nice. And we have to scroll over if we want to see any more of the report. And then we scroll down. And you get the totals for each department. So it looks like, well, sales. That one's kind of high in number there. And ooh, IT is a close second there at 12,000. And so below that, we've got customer service. Let's go to the next page. Oh, let's scroll to the top. And then we got two more. And then we have the two for customer service at 5,000. And there's the grand total. So I can click on it to zoom out, go back to page one to get an overall layout view. Looks pretty good. And then, of course, if I want to make any changes or tweaks, move the fields around, resize them. As you recall in earlier training videos, just, well, right click, go to the layout view, and you got your highlighted fields. Go ahead and select the ones that you want to manipulate by hovering over the borders and clicking and dragging to resize them or clicking on the field itself and moving them around or double-clicking to go ahead and rename the labels for the columns here of those fields. And let me go ahead and click off. You can also right-click, go to the design view, clean this up. So we've got a report header, which is the heading of the report, first page out of the two pages. If you had 20 pages, it would just be at the top of the first page out of the 20 pages. So heading the report, report header up at the top. Then you have the page header up at the top of each page. And then you've got your department code header, so below the labels, you got your data fields, the details, and then the department code footer. So at the end of each department, you get the summary of it. And then at the bottom of each page, or the footing of each page, you get, well, the now function. You can learn more about that in my Excel training video on functions. It just means it's pulling in today's date, what's now. And then you've got the report footer. So at the very end of the report, the grand total, if you can see that. That light shaded gray text grand total. Well, let me double click. Oh, there you go. When I click inside of that, it pops out against the white background and click off. And you just saw that when I double click on a field, it brings up its corresponding property sheet. More details about the field of what you can do to the field, like changing the formatting of it, doing some coding. But we'll cover that in a later training video. So let's go ahead and right click. We can go to the report view so we can just get an overall view of it and allow us to scroll from top to bottom and not have to go from one page to the next unless we want to right click and go to the print preview. If we have any additional pages, then we can go ahead and click go to the next page or 
Let me click on to zoom to zoom out. Click on to zoom in. And then if it's a wrap, go ahead and click on print. Of course, you got your other options here that we'll talk about in a later training video to work on those reports that are a bit difficult and not showing all the data on a page or breaking and causing a widow or an orphan at the top or bottom of pages where you have to flip back and forth. So access is a process. Bear with me. We'll be covering all this in more advanced training videos. When I'm done, let's go ahead and close the print preview and close out of the report. And any changes we made, nah, I won't save it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you get online access to all my training. Or for downloads and DVDs, please visit me at dreamforce.us.